Hello. All right. I am so excited to be having a conversation this morning with my dear friend, Lisa Morelli. She's also um, who I call for copy. Um, she's on speed dial for words. And we're talking about copy that makes you cash. So here is Lisa. Here she is. Hi, Ashley. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Because I quit Instagram, my, my camera was no longer connected. My audio was no longer connected. I was like, oh, geez. So. I really appreciate you making a comeback for a hot minute for me. I mean, anything for you, Kate. Anything for you. <laughs> I feel the same. So for those who may not know Licia, this is Licia Morelli, the founder and leader, CEO <laughs> of, of Morelli Writers, and um, she's amazing. So Licia and I have known each other for many moons, and first I met her when she was running her psychic business. Yes, she is incredible. And then I hired her as a copywriter and then she ended up running my company for almost two years and helped us go to seven figures, partially because of her copy genius. And then I, we, we've been friends the whole time and then I keep hiring her <laughs> to write good copy because she's so good at it. So this is Licia. Thank um, you. Is she named Origin? Licia named Origin. So it's, it's just, there's a lot of love here. It's a, sh it's a shining moment. It's a shining moment that every time I see it, I'm like, ah, I love a name. I love a name. So it's such a. I will never forget. I was in the Hannaford parking lot <laughs> listening to your voice memo, and you were like, how about Origin? And I was just like, <gasps> That's it. I'll just, ne I'll just never forget that moment. It just felt so right. So, and so many that you were in the Hannaford parking lot. This is so a grocery many, store, folks. This is a grocery you know, store. So many watershed moments in the Hannaford parking lot. <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about copy that makes you cash, and it's timely because not that long ago, um, the socials went down. And um, I am somebody, thanks to you and other teachers, who does not depend on social uh, to get in touch with my community. Um, so it was no big deal over here. But <laughs> I'm curious from your vantage point as somebody who has quit Instagram, why was that a moment for us all to pay attention to as business owners? And what is it, what is it signal for us that maybe some of us might be missing out on? Well, Kate, you, I have to tell you in my, my own private, like glory, I was a little bit happy that, that <laughs> sure. I, I was like, Oh, good. It's starting. Right. And you know, look, I know a lot of people run their businesses off of social and it's been a great platform for, you know, 10 years and things like that, but it's not dependable. This is, you know, Zucky does not have our best interests in mind. Like he's not thinking to himself, hmm, how can I make this life better for others? No, he is thinking of himself and his bottom line and his shareholders bottom line. And so what I like to tell people is have control over your business. You can use social media to help support that but do not rely on it. And I will give you a hot tip. I quit social media and have never been busier from referrals. So turns out I was wasting my time doing the reels, doing the posts, trying to figure out how to get people from Instagram to my email list, from Facebook to my email list, when in reality, referrals can come from people right? That actually does work. It still works. Um, right. And I just want everyone to know the importance of having control over your business by having an email list means that email, even if it does go down and Google occasionally has some, you know, quirks, but you still have control over your email. And when Facebook goes down and you're spending money on advertising or you're promoting something or you're doing something, suddenly 
if you don't have a backup plan or a plan that's the forefront over those two things, you are stuck. Sales goes down. Visibility goes down. Everything you're relying on is you're waiting for the engineers over at the social posts to get their act together and everything back up online. And I just, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that either. I mean, you and I, I think are probably both proud control freaks. And <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah. You know? And and like that's a beautiful thing to want to be able to harness your business and not be at the what I can't think of the way to say this, but like the mercy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. At the mercy of the tech gods. Right. Right? The right. literal and figurative figurative ones. Okay. So, and for those who are just joining in, I'm in conversation with Licia Morelli, who is a dear friend and also my favorite copywriter. And she is the woman who uh, named Origin, helped my company get to seven figures. And she is who I call when I need help with words. And, and also help with sales strategy, because it's not just about like, it's not about pretty words, even though you're really good at that. I, I have a timer on that's like, don't, you know, just you're done now. But I'm like, I'm not done because I'm talking to Lisa. <laughs> so the words that actually convert browsers into buyers. So yeah. we talked about why you need to be building your email list. And I want to know now, or, well, we didn't really talk about that. We did. We talked about why the importance of an email list. But what I want to know is, so many people like have an email list. I have a couple of friends in particular I'm thinking of who have huge social media followings and I'm on their email list and I never hear from them ever. They never, even when they're doing a big promo, they never email their list about it. And I'm shocked by this. And I mean, when I to myself, yeah. what was that? <laughs> My face is saying it all. I'm like, uh. exactly. Exactly. When I talk to them about it and I'm like, why are you, I'm on your email list. I am awaiting hearing from you. Hello. Nothing. And they say, I don't want to bother people. You know, I don't want to bother people. Nobody reads the emails anymore. We're all so inundated. Email is dead. I don't want to bother people. What do you have to say about that? And I know you actually have some, some data to share. Yes. So um, I was nerding out because I, I do get this a lot. Like, I don't want to email people more. I don't want to, you know, bother my community. They don't read their emails. They're only going to be on social. And, you know, if that were the case, like, I just say to people, let me reflect back to you. How often are you checking emails in your own inbox? And how often are you reading emails during your day, right? I feel like people are in their emails more and more. And also, and I didn't look up this data point, but it is one worth researching for everyone, is that most people um, prefer to get promotions in email. That's where they want it. That's where they want you to be sending them. And so the other data point is that there's no marked penalty for sending more emails. So if you're sending emails once a week, there's no penalty from your readers, like unsubscribes or whatever. If you start to send them daily or twice weekly, like there's no increase. Um, the science of email has discovered this. There's no increase in unsubscribes or anything if you email them more as long as you're already emailing them once a week. Um, you know, and for your friends with giant newsletter lists, I, I mean, I'm like heart attack city over here because for me, it's such a gift. Like all those people want to be hearing from, from them. Right. And sure. They might get a bunch of unsubscribes if they start to email more regularly, but those people probably would have unsubscribed anyway. Um, <laughs> point is, is that they're all waiting in the trust that they gave you. They said, Hey, I do want to be here. Um, so even if those people were emailing once a quarter, it would be better, but I recommend once a week or even twice weekly, I've moved to twice weekly and it's been great. <laughs> that, it's still, it still kind of blows my mind that for an increase in emails, you don't, there's no marked penalty. Um, I remember listening to Derek um, Halpern. 
thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> our friend Eric <laughs> talk about this and how there was no even during the launch he was he did sort of a split test. He's very you know, analytical, and he always wants to know the data. And he did a split test, and during a launch, he he did like twice as many emails as a different one, and he had zero percent more unsubscribes, but a significantly increased number of sales. Exactly. So there weren't more unsubscribes, but the conversions went way up with more emails during a promotional period. What do you have to say about that? And is that what you found? Yes. So that's what the new research is showing us. And the reason why this is happening is because so if people aren't necessarily opening your emails all the time and you're emailing more often, you are going to get more click through rates because if they didn't open the email on Monday, they may open the email on Wednesday. But if you only emailed them on one day, Monday, you won't have an open or click through on Wednesday because they just forgot about the email on Monday. I mean, Behavior of users in the email is something that is, one, psychologically fascinating to me, but two, it just may be the topic you were emailing about one Monday wasn't necessarily what they needed, and the topic you were talking about on Wednesday was, and they were reminded, oh, I should open that. So you're going to, because you're giving them more opportunities to open your emails, you're going to get more click-through rates. And, and I agree. I mean, Derek seems to know. The science of email seems to know. I'm, I'm going with it. I'm going with the science of email. <laughs> the science of email. And, you know, so many of us make these choices based on our feelings of not wanting to bug people or our feelings of not wanting to feel rejection, seeing our unsubscribes. And you know I love feelings. Anybody who's been around me, like, I love to talk about feelings. But sometimes we really just have to go with the science. So another question about feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so many people have this feeling that if they promote things in their email, they will be sleazy or salesy. And I wanna know how do we write copy that is selling without feeling gross or without other people feeling gross? Well, I love this question because it won't go with any of the tide that is out there right now. So, sorry everyone. So here it's a newsflash, like, sales are a huge part of the online marketing world. It's just funny that nobody talks about it in the way of like online marketing and sales. Everybody seems to think, put your stuff out there, throw the net, right? And then the sales will come in. That doesn't happen anymore. Like this is in 2008. Like we don't live in 2008. Like I yeah. wish some days it was 2008 again, only because I, if I knew what I know now and I knew it then, I, my mother wouldn't have asked me. Wouldn't it be great if you could make money on the internet? That's what she used to ask me. Anyway, so my point uh -huh. is, is selling without sleaze comes with relationships. You have a relationship with your customers. Your newsletter subscribers are the beginnings of the relationship. So you have to nurture that. You have to give them what they want. So, okay, another thing is, you have to be talking to them in their voice. I know, I know, everybody wants to sound like themselves online, but guess what? Your customers actually want you to sound like them. In <laughs> fact, they want 85% of emails to sound like them. They want the bulk of what they're reading to sound like them. I can't get this enough out there because there was just a HubSpot talk that Jeff Ernst gave and he did a whole pie chart. I felt so seen. So how you can sell without sleaze is by creating relationships and sounding like your customers and reflective listening. Look, you can still have your personality out there. I'm still talking like myself right now, but you can actually put their words like selling like selling and sleazy and all of that. That's all voice of customer. That's how customers talk to me all the time about selling. I don't want to sound sleazy. I don't want to sound like, you know, a true salesperson, which I'm like, I love sounding like a true salesperson because I'm building relationships. I'm reflectively listening. This is a back and forth. It's not just me sending you emails. So to answer your question, if you want to sell without sleaze in the emails, listen to what your customers want and create information that's new 
about what they want. So for example, I just did a bunch of research on landing pages and then I realized people really needed help with landing pages, even though, even though we have things out there that are super helpful about landing pages, there were some things that I knew they weren't getting. So I was listening to what they were saying. My landing pages don't convert. I don't know why. I build them, they look nice, but the words aren't right, right? So I started listening to that and then I created something new. So my, my point to all of this is, you won't sound sleazy selling if you're simply answering the questions that your customers want and you're talking about them in your emails. You're being helpful. You're also going to not sound sleazy if you <laughs> create examples. I just use this as a copy trend. If you create examples in your emails that are bound by stories, but also segue into the actual call to action right? Or you're giving them data points that might help them feel more confident about whatever it is they're answering or they're asking about. So all of this is just showing how helpful you can be, plus offering something more so they can keep going. Yes. Being helpful. There you go. And talking to your customers like they want to be talked to. This is so good. Okay. So part of the reason that I wanted to have this conversation today is that Licia offered us when we were doing um, our planning our origin launch that is the doors are open right now. Licia offered, she was like, hey, I have this program. It's called Copy That Makes You Cash, the swipe files that close every sale. And it has the elements of um, knowing how to create a nurturing sequence, knowing how to get amazing testimonials. And there's one other thing which I can't remember, but you can probably tell me. <laughs> Um, and that bonus is just only for people who join Origin in the next 24 hours. So if you're thinking about joining the Origin membership anyway, and you also want to get Licia's copy that makes you cash swipe files that close the sale every time, you can go over to originmembership.com and you'll be able to get access to that. Last time we offered this bonus, my DMs filled up with people who were already members of Origin, <laughs> being like, oh my God, wait. Do I get that too? Can I rejoin so I get it? And um, we, if you are already an Origin member, you will also get it. So you don't need to DM me. We'll just email it to you. Um, but Licia, do you want to talk a little bit about what this, what this program is and why it helps people? Yes. And I'm also going to add that, yes, the one thing that we, we also have on there is a re-engagement campaign. So yes. there's that, the yeah. re-engagement campaign. And as a very special surprise, I'm going to be offering um, people who join in the next 24 hours an audio lesson about landing pages specifically, as well as a PDF to help you write them so they convert. So if you do join, this is something that you, you will access as well. Um, okay, so let's talk about nurture sequences. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, you like leaned into I'm leaning in to put in the link. Oh, great. Okay. And so, also to listen more closely. <laughs> <laughs> You're my selling without sleeves. Okay. So when you join and you get this bonus, one thing that you're going to access is the nurture sequence. So I want to tell everybody that only 29% of online businesses have nurture sequences. 29%. If you're in the 72%, join Origin right now so you can get this bonus. And the reason why you need a nurture sequence, I love this stat from um, Market Study, Marketo Study, only 4% of people are ready to buy when they join your list. So 96% of the people that are on your, like join your list, they are not ready to buy from you. They do not want to buy anything. They want to get to know you. They want to have dinner. They want to have coffee. Like they need some nurturing. So if you don't want to sell with sleaze, know that your nurturing is going to help you not be sleazy. So that's the number one thing. That's why I created it. And is it sexy? No. Look, I get it. Sales pages, sales emails, all of it. It's like, look at the conversion rates. Look at us go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I write amazing sales pages. However, nurture sequences are my like nerdy self's tribute to the sales process. <laughs> like, please nurture your audience. They want you to like welcome them to the party and not throw a drink at them. They want you to welcome them, give them some chips, take their coat, right? Like, think about that. Um, and then testimonials. This is another component of the close every sales swipe file. You will learn how to 
capture testimonials that convert, right? So everybody thinks, you know, it's really nice to have a testimonial to say like, Kate's amazing. She's so nice, right? Okay, no. Yeah, that's great. We actually don't use those. We just, <laughs> every time I get them, I'm like, thank you. Not going to help our sales process at all. No. And here's why people want to know results, but they also want to know their customer experience, right? When people are reading about testimonials, they want your, the results that people get, even if it's a small result, it doesn't have to be a big result. It doesn't have to be like gangbusters. I made $800,000 in five minutes. Like, okay, that's probably not true anyway. Um, but they want to know how things are when they interact with the company. So 92% of people this is from Big Commerce. 92% of people read testimonials before buying. So they're looking to wow. the testimonials. Yeah, they are looking. 70%, according to Nielsen, 70% of people trust reviews from strangers. They don't care if they don't know you. They trust what you said. You said that bag was bad. They're not going to buy it, right? Like, that's it. And then finally, this one I love, 97% of customers said, Online reviews are the most reliable content. Wow. Your copy doesn't matter if you don't have testimonials. That's essentially what this is saying. So when you buy copy that makes you cash, or when you buy Origin and you get copy that makes you cash, this is what you're going to learn how to do. All right. So um, that's my last stat. That's what I got for you. That was amazing. So I just want to tell you, Licia, thank you for those stats, which I had actually already read in your email that came out this week. If you're not on Licia's email list, I highly recommend it. I know that's not what this live is about. But Licia, what is the um, link that we could give to get on your email list? Um, it is just Licia Morelli Writer doc, or I'm sorry, Morelli Writers dot com forward slash newsletter. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I do highly recommend it. getting on it because you learn data like this and copy tips that really work. And so um, this copy tip that you said 90, 96% of people who join your email list are not ready to buy. So I was about to write a nurture sequence that was actually a promo sequence. Yeah. And because I read that stat, I was like, hold the phone. I am changing directions. I don't know if you can hear Ruby shrieking in the background. She's having... I don't know what's happening in the living room, but she's having a good time. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm so glad. See, this is why email science is helpful to learn about not just like what you're feeling, even though that's yep. good too, uh, yep. because I think I just saved us a lot of time and also possibly unsubscribes. Yeah. So not to say that those don't work, you know, they might, but I'm just going to try going with the email science. So thank you well, for that. Well, what I would say too, this is a hot tip, like you can add in a three email nurture sequence that drips over a week or so and then add them to the sales right. sequence, right? So like, it's not that we can't sell. It's just that we need to pump the brakes. It's like dating everyone. Like, I mean, sure. There were the people you just, you know, say yes to all the time. But then there were the people you were like, I need a minute. Yeah, no, it's, I, yeah, no, very interesting. Okay, this is, this is so great. I'm also really excited about the PDF um, and the audio about landing pages that convert because uh, just because your landing pages look good, just because you use a, um, a template that, you know, somebody else said converts, words really matter. I would say the words matter far more than the design. Mm -hmm. um, copy really is king or queen. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to dig into that landing page uh, thing, particularly, and the re-engagement campaign. I'm actually really excited to use this whole bonus. Could we, we could use some floofing in all of those areas, all those areas. Okay, so you're going to go over to head over to originmembership.com, and if you join in the next 24 hours, you're also going to get that copy that makes you cash swipe files with the re-engagement campaign, how to get good testimonials, um, your nurture sequence, and this special bonus about landing pages. So I would love to know just in our next minute, uh, we'll, we'll uh, just take if there's one question. Let's just see if we have one question. And Lisa, thank you for being here. I've seen you showing up the whole time. We also had somebody named the well-nourished woman. I don't know if she's here yet, but just shout out to you because she said some beautiful things also. <laughs> um, and so if people are typing their questions, I want to let people know, like this audio file is exclusive to origin like anybody like i'm not putting it out anywhere else like the audio file is yours join in the next 24 hours because 
I'm telling you, like, you'll be set. You'll be set. All the content and origin, every time I go in there, I'm like, oh, it's like a library of success over there. I feel like if any, I feel like I'm like, I have a question. And I go in, and there it is, answered. So thank you for this huge resource. You need. It really is everything you need. Like, we've just, we, Lisa, we created something really good. We really did. <laughs> really good. And another but thing that people talk about community. I mean, I just want to remind everybody, like, first of all, the Origin Network and community is top notch, super smart, super, like, helpful and just really thoughtful. Like, I feel like whenever I think about my networks, Origin is at the top of my list. Anytime I need something or I want to go look to see what people are doing, I just, it's a reminder, like, not only do you get the education and all of the business tools, but you get the community and the community is so strong, so strong. Thank you for saying that. I love that. So we have Dora Moore Aynes, I don't know how to say that, but hello. Do you reuse nurture sequences? Yes. So one thing that I will tell you is that when you have a nurture sequence, you will want to have a delivery email that's different and more specific. So let's say you have an opt-in, right? You have an opt-in about vegetables and it's a specific veg, it's root vegetables. Somebody who's obsessed with root vegetables has signed up, right? So you would have an initial email very specific to that nurture sequence, but then you would have three emails that follow it that you can reuse for anything else. So that's your nurture sequence, but your first email is always going to apply to the actual um, gift or delivery or freebie or information that somebody has signed up for. But the rest of it, you can reuse. Okay, that's so helpful. That is so helpful. That was gold right there because every time we have a new thing, I'm like, oh frick. I have to create a new freaking nurture sequence and then I don't do it sometimes. And so that was really great information. Thank you for saving me so much time. Yes. Um, okay, great. Any other final questions before we wrap it up? Um, now's your moment. But as a reminder, we've got Licia Morelli's copy that makes you cash swipe files. That is our like limited time only bonus for the next 24 hours when you join the origin membership. I would also go over to originmembership.com because um, when you look at that, you'll see how we used voice of customer. That was something Licia helped me with this time around that really helped me. Obviously it was so much easier than writing it from my head. Um, so go check that out. Um, a wildly nourished woman. Hello. How do we all do this? How do we do all this without being overwhelmed? So what are your tips on that, Licia? Well, the, well, here's the thing. This is what I love about origin too, um, is that, the, it nothing has to be done like in the next five minutes. So what I love is that the copy that makes you cash swipe files is a, it's not, it's not your traditional swipe file where it's just like you copy and paste and you put it in. It It's a little bit mad libs. It's a framework, right? So the overwhelm is taken out because it's simply following along and putting in the little brackets, what you would put about your business, it cuts your time in half, right? If not three quarters. So what happens is the overwhelm shifts one, because you don't, one, you don't have to think about what to write. You're like, great. I know what my business is. I'm being prompted to put that into this nurture sequence. I have written it. It is done. I know exactly what needs to go into the nurture sequence. So number one, you cut down on overwhelm because you don't have to guess. And then the second thing that you don't that you cut down on overwhelm is that you can have the support of the origin community, right? If you're using this tool and origin community is available to you and you ask a question like, I've just written this nurture sequence. How does it sound? People can come and say, this is great. Or I have a question. And then you simply shift the language to the question. And then you've had a community of support as you do it. So the overwhelm is, is lessened, right? Look, I know I'm just going to name it running businesses. It's bananas. Like <laughs> there are days where I cry. Do I laugh? I don't know, but this is happening. So the overwhelm I tried to help with it is that you're just simply filling in the framework and 
what you need is already there. So it isn't, it isn't a hard process. It's a process that just you can get done and it takes a little bit of time, but once you're done, you feel great. I love that. So thank you, well-nourished woman. And also uh, women who settle for more ICU, you do need that. We all need this. I'm literally going to turn off this live and go open back up the copy that makes you cash my, my files because I'm realizing as we talk, I'm like, oh, there are some tweaks that I need to make. So thank you everyone so much for being here. Thank you, Licia, for being here and your fount of wisdom. It's just like, I learned so much today. I learned so much from you in general. Um, remember, go over to originmembership.com so you can get Lisi as a credit incredible bonus that is only available in the next 24 hours. Any final words that you would like to say, Lisi? I just really hope that people join Origin. Like, I can't say it enough. I mean, since 2017, just the journey of Origin and watching it unfold and grow, the wealth and breadth of information for your business that's not overwhelming it's in bite-sized pieces it's accessible at any time i mean i am i feel so proud to be a part of the origin experience anytime i'm in there or in the facebook group or you know watching a how-to video i cannot tell you enough how much information I get in those bite-sized pieces so that it saves me time it saves me money I don't have to buy a bunch of programs which I love. <laughs> and there's an answer for most everything you might ask online. So please head over, do it, make the leap, join the empresses. It's amazing. I can't say it enough. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. And thank you for being part of it since before day one. <laughs> thank you, Kate. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to Deb over at the Origin Company for being our forever hype woman and personal coach lasso. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks and for being here. We'll post this. Um, so if you topped on late and have a question, just go ahead and write it out and I can pop in and answer it. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Licia. Thank Bye -bye. you.